YouTube, how are you doing on this fine Wednesday? Today we're going to be talking about the disconnection issues at MLB The Show. And for once, we're actually not talking about the servers. Incoming rant alert for all those averse to online rants. I know I'm just an idiot with a camera. I can say whatever I want. But I feel like sometimes a rant is necessary. It lets us vent. It lets us feel better. It lets us get our thoughts out into the world. As you guys know, I am a massive fan of MLB The Show. You say, no shit, Kenny. You're recording videos and posting them to the internet. But I mean, even aside from content creation, I just do this for fun. I am a huge MLB The Show fan. I'm a huge baseball fan. This game, this sport, this community means a ton to me. I just want the best for it. So in today's Whiteboard Wednesday, we're going to be talking about some concerning trends I'm noticing with MLB The Show and SDS. Most notably, kind of showcased with the Great Race of 98 program that dropped last week. The program that was essentially an abomination. For newcomers to the channel, thank you for being here. Again, my name is Kenny, aka KDJTV. I upload MLB The Show content to YouTube Monday through Friday. But this content series, every Wednesday, Whiteboard Wednesday, features no gameplay. It's all about me and this whiteboard. We have some fun, we rant, we maybe a little comedy thrown in there. If you think I'm funny, cool beans, I appreciate you. But this series is just for fun. We do this for fun. We also do this to let our thoughts out, let out our feelings. This is a safe space. So before you go, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're on the road to 2K. Of course, like the video. We can kill the YouTube algorithm together. And leave a comment down below on your thoughts on anything we're about to talk about. I feel like you guys might have some feelings on this one. First, we start with just a bit of history, because I recognize that some people who watch this channel were not born in 1998, which for me, as a 30-year-old born in 1992, that is astounding. In 1998, homers were flying out the yard. Baseballs were juiced. You thought Aaron Judge's baseballs were juiced last season? This was on a similar level. And speaking of juice, a lot of people were putting steroids in their butts. By the end of the season, it was between Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire as to, first of all, who was going to lead the National League in home runs, but more importantly, who was going to set the single season home run record. Many baseball historians, many baseball fans, many people who've watched baseball for eternity. Consider the great race of 98, one of like the pivotal moments of modern day baseball. It might have even saved the sport. It attracted attention. It attracted fanfare. Chicks dig the long ball. It brought a sport that was slowly dying back into relevance. Ironically, the great race of 98 program and MLB The Show could not save the game from what's looking like an earlier and earlier defeat with each passing week. Before we get to the most egregious error of the entire program, I want to start with the henchmen. This Great Race of 98 program dropped on September 8th, aka 9-8. They were clearly hyping up the number 98, and for obvious reasons. What they proceeded to do was completely drop the ball on putting 98s all the way throughout this program. All the henchmen, as we like to call them, were 97s, and not even good ones. A horrible Derek Jeter, Jason Kendall for some reason, Greg Vaughn with 81 clutch, Larry Walker that plays second and third. That card should have been a 99 because it's super cool. Instead, it's the middest of mid. There are other cards as well. Rob Nen and Troy Percival are semi-viable relievers just because of the state of relief pitching in this game. But if you guys follow me and, and listen to my podcast every Tuesday, you know that I kind of consider or, or evaluate relievers and closers on an entirely different scale to other cards because they're just so few and far between and it really doesn't take much to make a reliever good. So yeah, all the henchmen cards should have been 98s. Why? We don't have many 98s in this game, and it would have fit the theme. This was also a great opportunity to get our first ever 98 overall captain card that could have boosted the cards in this program. Because this is also a card series, the race for 98. It was not just a themed program, it was a new card series. But instead of dropping a 98 overall captain, or dare I say two 98 overall captains, they dropped zero captains. And you know what would have made a lot of these henchmen cards a lot better? Captains. You know that new mechanic they want us to use this year? That mechanic that's supposed to make 97s look like 99s? They just completely ignored captains. The reason so many people are let down by this program, again, we have not even talked about the most egregious error yet. I promise we'll get there. But the reason people are so upset about this program is it is very rare for SDS and MLB The Show on their social media accounts to truly hype up a program the way they hyped up this one. There was a lot of hype for the extreme program. That made sense. That's a community favorite. There was also a lot of hype for the Easter Egg Hunt program. That was brand new and fun. It made sense to hype that up. Please bring that back, by the way. But with the amount that the Great Race of 98 program was hyped up, we were expecting heat. Maybe that was false hope on our part. Maybe it was a little bit of copium. 
But we were really expecting some viable cards in this program. Of course, maybe not all 99s. We know that's not how SDS operates these days. But still, we expected some viable cards. Instead, what we got was mostly shit. Sammy Sosa, one of the cool new legends that they got this year, presumably for the Race of 98 program, because we also got Mark McGuire. Don't worry, we'll get there. Sammy Sosa got a banging NL Live Series collection card. Of course, that is core, based on his MVP 1998 season. No, you're not going crazy. His MVP 1998 season was also the Great Race of 1998 season. You know, the same exact year. There are frequently questions in the community about how SDS chooses attributes for certain card types and card series. We know an awards card is based off that year. We know a signature series card is based off a specific three to five year window. We know how some of these things work. Finest, of course, is based off the season they just had. But card series like Kaiju or Incognito are kind of just up to the interpretation. The Charisma series, the Snapshot series, SDS can kind of fudge the numbers and do whatever they want there. But with the Great Race of 98 program, they had no such leeway. It was based off 1998. So why, on Ramon's Green Earth, did a card, a 99 overall card, of Sammy Sosa, based on the 1998 season, not have at least kind of close attributes to the MVP card we got day one? The card we just received on Friday is objectively terrible. There are at least, at least, 15 outfielders I'd rather use than that card. Some of them aren't even 99s. That's how poorly built that Sammy Sosa was. It's honestly ridiculous that in a season in which Sammy Sosa hit like 66 home runs, I think it was, he doesn't even have max power on his great race of 98 card. I can envision some people watching this video saying that I need to get over myself and stop concerning myself with trivial things like this. It doesn't matter in real life, I understand that. But I like to try to get in the heads of SDS when I'm thinking of how they do content. I like trying to stay a step ahead. But when they do stuff like this, I'm just at a loss for words. And allow me to cherry pick for a second. SDS, like I said, can build cards however they want for the most part. Sammy Sosa, super dope new legend, has one of the best attribute cards in the game. That's that National League Live Series collection card we were just talking about. But how on earth does a player like Brandon Crawford have two 99s that both are better than this great race of 1998 Sammy Sosa. Giants fans, I'm not picking on Brandon Crawford. I am a huge Brandon Crawford fan. Incredible defender, has had some solid to very good offensive seasons, if not just a little inconsistent from time to time. Also, his swing is one of the crispiest in the game. He's a fan favorite of MLB The Show players. But in a world in which players can now get multiple 99 overall cards because of sets and seasons, it is just downright silly for someone like Crawford or Kyle Schwarber to have two 99s drastically better than the second 99 of Sammy friggin' Sosa. I said this in the podcast yesterday, but I know the audiences necessarily aren't the same, so I'm going to reiterate this point again here. I would love to meet the individual at SDS who creates Brandon Crawford cards. Those cards are built perfectly. I am pretty convinced that same person is not building every single card, because you cannot tell me someone with a sound mind put together that Brandon Crawford, or both of those Brandon Crawfords, and then also thought this was a good idea for Sammy Sosa. I think all we ask for as a player base, as fans of this game, is consistency. And I don't think that is inappropriate to ask for or even expect. Communication would be great. Self-awareness would be great. Apologies for connection issues and tournament problems would be great. But at the very least, I would settle for consistency. And this year, more so than ever before, we've had almost none of it. And the reason consistency is so much of a conversation with the Great Race of 98 program is because Mark McGuire's 99, the end card at the program, is juiced like crazy. Which is perfect, because to reiterate an earlier point, he put a lot of steroids in his butt. This is an issue that dates back to drop, because the Sammy Sosa card we got on drop was incredible. The Mark McGuire card we got on drop was not as good. So what did they do? All these months later, they just flippity flopped it around. Mark McGuire got a crazy card, Sandy Sosa got a not good card. Some of you might argue that's consistency, but if I'm being honest, that's not exactly the consistency I'm looking for. The problems with Mark McGuire's card truly have nothing to do with SDS, it's just the nature of this game. He has an objectively really bad swing. I think both Mark McGuire 99s have really, really bad swings. That is not necessarily something SDS can impact unless they go back into the code and maybe quicken it up a little bit. McGuire's also slow, really slow, and a not great fielder. At this point in the year with sets and seasons, we have so many players who are versatile enough and fast enough 
and strong enough in the field that we don't have to subject ourselves to running Mark McGuire out at first base, or hell, even DH. So, the problems with that are kind of, sort of, not an SDS problem. You could say they are, but I think you know what I'm getting at here. I'm not blaming them for the shortcomings of Mark McGuire. I am 100% blaming them for the shortcomings of Sammy Sosa. So the next logical question here is how do we fix it? And this is where I ask you, how do you guys want to fix it? I have my opinions. I like sets and seasons. I just don't think they balanced the spread of content this year. I don't think they thought it through as much as they should have. I also think they overvalued the impact of captains. But it's the first year of sets and seasons, and the first year of captains. It was not going to be perfect at the jump. I think one of the ways we make this better is we make captains actually good. We make captains have the ability to be upgraded to the 99 overall version of the same player we already have. That eliminates the issue with a weak 99 Sammy Sosa, because the boost we'd get from an actual good captain would kind of offset the stinkiness a little bit, and I wouldn't be upset as much. And this might be a hot take, but I think with the Sets and Seasons model, SDS should focus heavier on dropping 99 overall versions of Legends much earlier in the year, before they start focusing on all the current day players. I'm not saying phase out the current day 99s entirely. Of course, we're going to sprinkle them in here and there. Those are also fan favorite cards. But while people buy this game and are playing this game, give them the Legends. Give them Griffey. Give them Brett. Give them whoever else you want. That eliminates a lot of the duplicity of all these cards where we get two 99 Schwarbers within eight weeks but still haven't seen Brett or Murray or guys like that. That'll do it for this Whiteboard Wednesday. Consider this rant complete. I even threw in an old journalism sign-off to show you that this was essentially a column but put into words. I hope you guys appreciated the rant. I know not everybody is going to come from the same place and there will be differing opinions. So let's have a conversation down below. I'd love to hear from you and see what you think. Adios. See you next time.